What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. On today's video, we got all the airlines. Finally, right? Got a bunch of them, all kinds of sizes. Got hoses. Got hose for days, boys. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get to installing all this stuff. Um, they include all my cooler lines. Uh, they include the uh, fuel uh, fuel supply, fuel return. They also include the uh, reservoir lines here, the oil cash can lines. So pretty much everything, including the, uh, also includes, oops, it also includes the oil cooler stuff. So yeah, a lot of lines, a lot of work. So. Stay tuned. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to mark where you're going to cut with um, painter's tape. And that is to keep the uh, nylon and the steel braiding from, <laughs> from spreading apart. What are you yelling at? Kiss it from spreading apart and um, if they do spread apart, you won't be able to slide the fitting on top of it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the uh, the oil cash can lines here. So these two on top, they gotta make their way below the turbo and back up to this guy. So and then after that, there are the two coming out of the PCV plate, which you can't see, but it's down there. So I'm gonna have to remove this guy to run those. So for the oil cash can, we got regular AM fittings with regular AM lines. It's not PTFE, it's any of that. So it's just good old nylon braided AM hose and the fitting. So we're gonna put that in the vise, measure how much hose we need and start cutting. two lines are halfway done because these I originally had it as a 90 but then my issue with the oil cash can happen so I, now I need a straight piece coming out of it and that doesn't get here until tomorrow so I'm just gonna leave those chilling right there and uh, move on to the top here now here on top I'm only gonna do the far one because I can bend the hose down but this one instead of a 90 I bought a 150 which goes pointing down right because if I put a hose right here it's gonna come out this way and then burn um, turn down and get burned with the exhaust here so the 150 works great it just has a already the fitting pointing down and I can snake it through here to the back or to the front we'll see so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that one right there all right so I got that guy on here coming down instead of going through the back I have it come through the front here and up to the top here so going straight down and below the exhaust was getting way too close so I decided to put a 90 on it you can see it right there a 90 and come off from the top and run around so like I said I'm still waiting on these two fittings here and the 150 for that guy and that should wrap up the yoga cash can so so next up, I think I can start working on the, let me see, oil cooler lines. Those right there, those two. 
they come all the way to over here. Now the difference with these is that these are PTFE lines, which means they got a Teflon, Teflon lining in it. You can see the white plastic inside the line. If we'll focus on it, there you go. So that, that lining of Teflon means that that hose is pretty good with oil and fuel. So I don't want to take any risk of the line, you know, coming bad in the uh, in the future, maybe bursting or doing some weird shit. So I'm just going to head and make sure that anything related to oil and fuel is a uh, PTFE. I got the oil cooler back on the car. And uh, also I want to show you guys, some of you may not know, but this is how you can tell them apart. The regular AN fitting from a PTFE fitting. Come on, come on, there you go, you got it. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but you see, so the PTFE is on top. You see how it has a little uh, tin poking up in the back and the other one is pretty much flat, and you can see there. So that's how you can tell them apart. This is a regular AN line, it doesn't have that bevel edge, and this is the PTFE one. So here we are. Before you remove the white tape, make sure your the back of your fitting is so it's in. And then you can go ahead and remove that. Spread out the wire here for the collar to go in. And then the actual fitting. I'm gonna show you that next. So that's the collar and needs to sit all the way in. You got the fitting on the vise here. It's black so it won't show it up so good on camera. But spray some WD-40 on that guy. And you push this in. Like that, once it's sitting all the way, you're gonna bring in your fitting from the back and start praying. Once it's on, you grab your wrench here and finish it. All right, once it's done, it's gonna look like something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead now and do the other side. All right, there we have the connections there. And up here, one right there, the other one over there. So those are done. They're out of the way. So I'm gonna move on to the radiator hoses. So I'm gonna start with this one. Coolant reservoir goes from there to the radiator down there. So I'm gonna start with that one. And I totally forgot to record this one. Anyway, I thought the bigger the hoses, the easier will be to, to make, but uh, uh, it wasn't. So. <laughs> This thing was a pain in the butt to do. And I'm thinking that the ones for the radiator over here is gonna be even worse. But yeah, anyway, moving on. So what I'm doing right here with this guy is I'm making a bracket for this. It's gonna say something like that. Of course, this is not gonna be that big. It's a work in progress, so I'm gonna work on that now.
All right, you can kind of see the sensor is chilling right there with the adapter. Yeah, you can see it right through the hole on the uh, on the thing. But anyway, I zoom back out. That's where it's sitting. So that's why I didn't record installing it because it's all the way down there, and I can't really show it. Let me see if I can get underneath. All right, here you go. You can see it there. By the way, with this subframe, look how much room for activities. I, I can really get my hand everywhere in here. It's such a shame I don't have a turbo sitting in behind the engine anymore because this would have been great for that. But at the same time, I'm not complaining with that beauty. So good. So the next thing I gotta do here is I gotta install this fuel filter and um, for that I've been working on a bracket which has that then these two things are gonna get welded on there and then these behind it and that should be able to bolt on on the car somewhere so I'm gonna get to welding these and uh, show you what I got Alright, so this guy's pretty much done. I just gotta drill some holes in the back here, on that edge, and bolt it down on the car. Gotta find a spot for it. But uh, it was pretty simple to make. As you can see, I welded all the stuff up, and I put some um, casket maker uh, material in between the, the parts so they don't get scratched from any vibration and stuff like that. So that is good to go. Alrighty guys, it's a few days later. I don't even know where I left off, but here's an update anyway. I'm working on the uh, fuel feed line here. So you can see it's a stainless steel finish. Now, these lines are different. These are PTFE, like I mentioned before, which is great for fuel and oil. But this one is also conduct what is called conductive uh, PTFE, meaning that uh, when you're running 85, if there is any uh, electric discharge from static energy it won't burn a hole through it by trying to ground to a chassis place so that's why you get those now they didn't have that in black so I had to go with the stainless finish but uh, it's alright it, it will kind of match the uh, turbo finish metal finish anyways so I did that one that one goes from the regulator to the fuel rail. I'm gonna work now on the one that goes from here to my uh, ethanol contact sensor down there. All right, guys, there we are. That's the fitting right there, the hose, and then then it hooks up down there. All right, so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep doing the back all the way to the tank, and uh, I'll catch you with the next one.
All right, guys, so now that I got all the lines pretty much ran where they gotta go, I'm missing a few things here and there, like uh, uh, this, the uh, 150 didn't work, so I'm gonna get a U-turn U there for that line. And then the second line here, as it, was make, as, as it make its way to the radiator, it hooks up on top with just a clamp, like a little nipple here, down there. And uh, the sizes are not the same. Uh, that's A and 6 hose, and this is a little bigger than that. So I'm going to have to get an adapter for that right there. Um, all the fuel lines are run. So what I got left to do here is I'm going to take everything back out, the manifold, so I can get it painted. A unicooler pipe, I need to get that painted. And then I also need to plug the injectors back down there, which I got the part. Let me show you. Here it is stainless uh, it will use a seal just like your injector would uh, but it will bolt right up so I gotta give this a final test fit and then order the other three. Oh, I also added the tubular blanket and man that's a tight fit right there went through but it's also going to protect these from overheating all these lines so that worked out great looks really good I like the look. All right, moving on. Oh. All right, guys, this is where I'm going to end this video. Um, I took everything back out because I'm going to paint it white. I got a, my little booth going on there. Um, I'm gonna paint the manifold and the uh, inner cooler piping in white, so I had to take everything back out. But the A lines, which is the main purpose of this video, are pretty much done. I got my little U-turn here. I had to make it a U-turn because everything else uh, was pushing this hose too far out and I was clashing with that. So that's all ready to go. Um, I got the rest of the lines cleaned up. And yeah, and look at this guy, look how, how tight that is. Pretty much fitting to fitting. It's only got about a half inch of, of rubber hose there. But uh, the engine's gonna have a rear motor mount solid, so it's not gonna rock back and forth. It didn't used to move much before either. Uh, I made sure I look at some videos of dyno pools, and the engine barely moved. So. We should be good with that and also I uh, the, the radiator has a little bit of flex to it uh, the mounts are not totally solid so that that should be fine if it doesn't work out and it breaks well we'll, we'll think of something else um, so yeah anyway uh, here's the lighting anyway uh, thank you all for watching so much please subscribe like the video share helps me out if you want to keep seeing contact, please do so. And uh, I'll see you next time.